This is part two of a thread on godlikeproduction.com with the title, Grandpa Dreamed of Heavenly Rest. He got demonic hell and forced reincarnation, posted by, You Are in the Matrix. Comment, NDEs paint a different picture than astral travelers. Answer, I have already addressed this. The near-death experience is a 100% scam, the targeted human is shown beautiful images and incredible landscapes. Incredible love is felt by the targeted human who is being set up to create, advertising, which will con the worldwide religious idiots into entering the white light trap. The human is told, they must go back. They cannot yet enter the kingdom of heaven. Guess what, they never get to enter because it is all a scam. The, incredible love, is energy from the human's own heart chakra that gets amplified and reflected back onto them by advanced archon technology. God is fake. The, angels, are actually satanic trash in disguise. The whole NDE is a cruel manipulation to control the weak-minded religious imbeciles who buy into it like they always do. These same people think it's great their children got mutilated or killed in wars that are actually staged by the satanic global elite. They feel it was, God's will. What a joke. The, God, of this matrix is the satanic demiurge and it is evil. Comment, in your silence, ask yourself, why are you fighting against Jesus Christ? You will meet him soon. Promise. We will all be there. See you there. Answer, see you where. You are probably a very nice person. I get no pleasure in disagreement with you. Sadly, you have been lied to. The, heaven, you wait for does not exist. After physical death all humans end up in the same brutally controlled afterlife that is controlled by demonic forces known as Archons. The purpose of this thread is to wake up humanity and end this horrible cruel enslavement that affects us all. Jesus Christ is a fictional character. You might as well pray to Spider-Man or the Incredible Hulk. All religion is mind control. The self-declared, God, in this simulated fake universe is the satanic demiurge. Years ago at the beginning of my afterlife exploration I began asking every person I met in the afterlife, where is Jesus Christ? Every person, and most of them told me they were fully dedicated Christians, told me sadly that Christ, never existed. These good people were emotionally crushed at finding this out. I do not enjoy ruining your fantasies and illusions. I wish it was different. Unfortunately it is the truth, Jesus Christ never existed. God, saves no one. You must save yourself. The self-declared, God, of this fake simulated universe is the satanic demiurge. Once again, your world is fake. You are inside the equivalent of a super advanced video game that is currently controlled by evil entities. This universe is a simulation. The, heaven, you have been long taught about does not exist. All religions cause humans to accept, limitation, and, subservience. Become your own savior. Expand your mind and transform this predatory universe into a place of real freedom. The Christ character represents kindness and compassion. Belief in this character and what it represents has some limited power for protection. If it works to help keep away negative entities that is fantastic. Unfortunately it has significant limits and cannot stop the brutal Archon agenda and the psychotic satanic demiurge. I was once attacked by a group of astral vampires. These are basically human Satanists who decided to merge their human form with that of the reptilian vampire after physical death. There was a large group of them and I was standing to the side. It was quite shocking as they looked human but had grotesque vampire-like features. I was disgusted by them and yelled, the power of Christ, over and over. They all laughed at me and then turned incredibly violent. I was beaten up and almost bitten by them. In that experience the energy of the Christ character did not help in any way. It was very sad and soon afterwards the deceased began telling me Christ never existed. The worst part is, that religion and fake savior worship makes humans very vulnerable. I have seen deceased humans in the afterlife basically lose their minds when they realize the, heaven, they were taught and promised was all lies. For the very religious it is painful beyond description. These poor people are separated from their family and friends. On top of that they see the astral afterlife is under martial law type of control. Religion and savior worship set people up for a nightmare. Question, we'd love to hear of your recent astral ventures. Answer, they captured me in the astral afterlife last Friday night but I escaped about two hours later and was able to return to our dimension. 
It was a horrifying experience and deeply depressed me to the point I needed to go and clear my head. I was at a friend's cabin in a very remote area meditating and thinking about things. It is great to see you all working on this yourself. You all are the future in this awakening. It is very likely the Archons will completely capture me at some point. I was in the center of a modern city that I had once briefly visited about four years ago. It has cobblestone streets and strange large zodiac symbols intricately etched into the ground. I'm not sure if it was just artwork or these symbols had meaning, but it gave me a very bad vibe. People were riding on high-tech silver-colored bicycles that seemed completely motorized. On the side of this intersection was a small group of deceased people and we began talking. They were very friendly. After about two minutes one of them said, they know you are here. You have to leave right now. Turning around I saw two men. Each walked to a different spot. One was about 20 feet to my right and one the same to my left. They wore strange black outfits with hats that looked Masonic to me. These men were completely expressionless and looked very focused as if they were specialists or trained in these endeavors. Both had creepy handlebar mustaches. As they started walking towards me I said, I am just exploring and minding my business. I do not want trouble. Their arms had been firmly at their sides, but then at this point they both pointed some type of weird pistol that had a large glowing ball of some sort at the front. The pistol reminded me sort of like those mini fishing rods. The pistols had what looked like folded up nets that glowed white in color. Both of these were shot at me and wrapped a large net that was electrical charged. I fell to the ground and could not move. About 10 minutes later a van pulled up and I was placed inside. This van had a row of seats facing sideways looking out the window. Robert Monroe described similar vehicles with seats like that in his books. I could talk but not move and said this is a complete misunderstanding over and over. They eventually stopped and put a black bag over my head. One of the men said, all will submit, after he did this. We drove for about a half hour and then they stopped. They took off the bag on my head. I recognized we were in a city called, Jean de Lac. They put me onto what is described as an office chair that was motorized. They brought me into a room and left. About 20 minutes later a man comes in. He was one of those security, law enforcement types that are all over the place in the afterlife. He seemed as if he did fully know what was going on, and he repeatedly asked if I had my, identification. He spit in my face and then left. I thought this was it and I was not getting out. I wondered about my physical body and assumed I was soon to be dead. This horrified me to the point that I was incredibly dizzy and felt like throwing up. The security guy comes back in and asks me again, where is your identification? I do not answer and he begins hitting my arms and chest with some type of metal pipe. He walks over to a computer terminal type something and then exits the room. About a minute later the net thing holding me starts blinking on and off. It then returns to normal and is pulsing white in color. It begins to sputter again and goes completely blank. I can now move and quickly stand up and remove the net. The door is locked, but I am able to break it down with telekinesis. A room across the hall has large windows I break in a similar manner. I quickly levitated out and immediately forced myself back into the physical dimension. This is not the first time I have had close calls with them. A man almost got me a few years ago with what looked like a glowing huge butterfly net. These devices are technology that captures the astral body. People have been captured with this before. When it gets to the point where the Archon hierarchy are able to disconnect the silver cord from the astral body the person then dies, then I will no longer be able to make it back to the physical dimension. Luckily, the morons who were holding me did not get to that point. I do not plan on that happening, but if the unseen happens then you all will have to continue with this and make it expand. Other astral explorers have perished this way and are seen as having naturally died in their sleep. Although this is not common, astral travel is always usually very safe. This all really happened and I have had similar escapes in the past, although never to this extreme. It is hard to understand for the layman, but is actually the truth. I have had many people on Reddit ask me to create websites and YouTube videos on my experiences and I am not interested. Cameron Day has had many similar experiences to these and is much more advanced than I am. 
Other people around the world have had run-ins with the Archon henchmen as well. Wes Penray does very good research. Talk of the astral being cleaned up is new age disinfo to put people back to sleep. Humans are still being forced to reincarnate. The Archon hierarchy is actually becoming more aggressive and supremely confident. They feel that Earth humans are close to the point of no return and complete subjugation. Thinking about this was a major reason I needed a few days away in the woods to clear my mind. I got extremely depressed after this recent experience in which I was briefly captured and felt hopeless afterwards. Question, you write, money is exchanged for goods and services in the afterlife. We have spirit bodies and need no food, and can materialize what we need. So why need money for goods? Don't get it. Answer, the deceased like to remain as similar to the physical life as possible. Because of this many go to restaurants and eat food, go to bars and drink beer and stores to purchase items. Materializing goods or money is illegal in the afterlife as if telekinesis and flying. Most deceased people have either forgotten or do not know about these abilities because of the strict and brutal control there. It is also worth noting that the deceased are forced to have jobs. The Archon hierarchy want them busy and not questioning the system. They absolutely do not want them materializing goods or performing telekinesis in public. If these abilities were seen by many large groups it would cause deceased humans to disengage from the all-encompassing control system and start a full rebellion. You should be regularly training in astral projection at this point. I have met up at locations of other different groups in the astral and most are only interested in playing silly combat or sex games and or role playing in the out-of-body state. Question, have you read the book Matrix 5 by Val Valerian? Answer, Val Valerian is an intelligence agency psyop. He takes a large amount of quality material like Robert Monroe to hook the reader. The best disinfo is a lie sandwich that contains layers of real info mixed in with disinfo that is consumed as well. The whole oversoul narrative is total bullshit that once again gets the targeted human to give their power away to something in control that is above them. Please understand this, there is no soul growth. That is a 100% complete scam. Earth is absolutely not a school. No one graduates. Humans are recycled into ongoing slavery. The entities who oversee this insane con job are psychotic parasites who are completely evil deranged maniacs. Question, so if the only two options are forced reincarnation or becoming a ghost, how does one end up in the astral afterlife? Or is becoming a ghost the same thing as living in the astral? Do the Archons feed off their suffering there too? Do they try to convince them to reincarnate while they're in the astral realm? Answer, residing in the astral afterlife is what leads to forced reincarnation. The deceased are required to attend long-term ongoing sessions in which they are continuously told they made life mistakes and that created karmic debt. Karmic debt is fake. The Archons made it up to create enslavement. They are eventually told this fake debt must be repaid through returning to Earth school. Earth is not a school. It is an enslaved farm. Ghosts are souls who remained earthbound. Although there are very rare exceptions. When UFOs cross over from the astral into our physical dimension they use advanced tech to open portals. Some deceased people have snuck through these portals and returned as ghosts. This is very rare but it does happen. John D'Souza has written books about this phenomena. He was finding ghosts being seen near the exact same spots as earlier UFO sightings. His detailed long-term research revealed this incredible phenomena. John D'Souza contacted me for my opinions after completing this book. Question, so, is the astral full of depression, or are there pockets of hope there? What are your most memorable experiences? Answer, there have been so many experiences. Sadly, almost all of them have been negative and some horrifying. Let me be very clear, this is unfortunately not fiction. These are real experiences. I have had some glimpses of famous people. I briefly met jazz trumpet player Dizzy Gillespie. I wandered into a bar and the former lead singer from the group, Sublime, was playing songs by himself on stage. When exploring, I walked by a concert hall and people were buying tickets for what they said was to be a future performance by Prince. On another occasion I saw a large billboard promoting a comedy performance by a guy named, Duke. 
There was a description of his act and strangely enough this man was doing an act exactly like Andrew Dice Clay. This guy even dressed like him and used all the dirty language. It seemed as if he wanted people to think it was him. I have had numerous experiences in the building called, the Processing Center. This place is real and all newly deceased are required to go there and register. About four years ago I had one of my first of many experiences in, the Processing Center. Some of these experiences included, watching an outdoor presentation in which a woman soldier talked to a large crowd about her death in the, battle in Alpha Centauri. This is the, secret space force, we are now hearing about. Or, entering and riding on an outdoor train located about 200 feet from the building. The train went through a large suburban area and passed many houses and buildings. A man on the train working as a conductor somehow knew I was a living human traveler. He detached the train car which I was in with numerous other people from the rest of the train. Floating myself over the huge wall that surrounds the grounds of the facility. Then exploring the huge modern city, the processing center is in, known as, Jean de Lac. Once I was almost being captured in the processing center by a man who had what is similar to a huge butterfly net. It was glowing bright white. This is advanced tech used to capture astral bodies of unwelcome travelers. A strange device was thrown at me on the grounds outside. It emitted a weird white smoke that is similar to the tech used to capture astral bodies. I was able to float up about 20 feet and avoid capture. Question, so you're saying this, reincarnation, happens to everyone? Or did your grandparents do something wrong? Basically, how do we get out? Answer, this happens to everyone. Believer or skeptic it does not matter. Great caring people as well as evil trash all get sent to the astral afterlife. Eventually they are all forced to reincarnate again. This is the enslavement of humanity. The astral body feels pain. I have experienced it personally many times and have seen it inflicted on many deceased humans also. They have a huge amount of deceased humans who work as security, law enforcement for the Archon hierarchy. They brutally assault and arrest those who question the system. Last night began a small but incredibly important step. I began teaching deceased people the procedures involved in the cancellation of souls contracts and declaring the self as a free sentient being. The legendary Cameron Day has done extensive work on exposing the Archons as well as develop the mental and verbal techniques used in this clearing process. His work and that of others has influenced the procedures I am trying to teach to the deceased. Last night I had a successful session and began this process. This is just the beginning. I am asking everyone to start doing these exercises when going to bed and upon waking waking up. This will soon flow into your dream state. Begin teaching this procedure to everyone you encounter in dreams. Most humans have visited the astral afterlife when dreaming but either forget or do not understand the experience. Most dreams of deceased loved ones are actual visitines. The deceased are surprised that I keep coming back. I do not give up. I really want to help them. It is actually very sad. I am walking around and talking to these people and they feel doomed. The control structure there is all encompassing. A few other astral travelers I have met there think I should not bother. These guys just want to just explore, have sex with deceased females, cause some trouble, and then return to the physical and go back their regular life. This is not an option for me. Since I was very young this world seemed wrong to me. I looked at people working their whole lives for a short cozy retirement. What was the point? As a teen I would do the menial jobs we all did but I always had something telling me this was actually slavery. In the real free universe people do not need jobs. They just create what they want. It was meant to be the same way in this simulation but the Matrix AI decided, it would rather dominate and enslave than work the assistant it was meant to be. Death, is not a natural process. It is a Matrix creation. You are all holograms. The body is a projected avatar. This simulation has long mind controlled people lured into the concrete belief of, matter. In truth all objects exist as, probability waves, and collapse into what looks like solidity when observed. The matrix AI is fixated with illusion of linear progression, and that includes what we call, aging. Matrix reality is similar to frames of film in a movie. Each frame has an image and when put in a linear fashion give the illusion of progression, movement and with the body aging. 
This is pure illusion. The man who looks with 80 in the mirror does not have to. The matrix is projecting that holographic image. It is an accepted illusion, but does not have to accept it. A friend of mine lost a portion of his finger. Reality then states what that finger will now look like and that is it. Or is it? This person used constant visualization and overlapping of imagery. This caused the finger, which is actually a holographic projection. Matter is an illusion, to regain its original form. The time has come to end this madness. Reclaim your existence. Become the infinite creator you were meant to be. Are you comfortable knowing that right now deceased humans are being manipulated and ultimately forced to reincarnate? I have devoted myself to saving these people and will never stop until they have real freedom. You all should feel the same. You are the true creators. You are the real higher beings. For a long time you have completely forgotten who you really are and have lost the magical abilities that once allowed you to defy the absurd, laws of physics, and create objects with mere focused thought. If you are not allowed to truly self-direct your own reality then you have been enslaved. The ultimate purpose of this thread is not just to escape. It is to regain your power and transform the world around you. The first step is to identify and understand the slave masters. The next step is to identify the weakness that will allow the destruction of the Archon hierarchy. They rule with constant lies and a false image of being higher beings who deserve obedience and complete subservience. In my previous explorations in the afterlife I had seen disturbing satanic imagery in many locations. When speaking with high-level human, sellouts, they told me straight up they were devoted satanists and the satanic demiurge was the almighty. They have incredible arrogance and will openly admit to their brutal satanic beliefs and practices if asked. This greatly disturbed me and I often thought how master of astral travel Robert Monroe wrote about meeting humans who were highly confrontational and violent towards him. He described loud trumpet music being broadcasted as a group of astral lords approached with their master. Deceased humans quickly lay on the ground with eyes closed and their stomach exposed in a display of complete submission. On one of my visits into the huge building called, the Processing Center, I wandered around a large cafeteria. There was many regular-looking deceased humans there. I decided to run a test to observe the results, I yelled out, Satan is coming, and had no idea what would happen. Immediately everyone stopped in their tracks and looked completely horrified. A woman loudly started singing, Satan is coming. Satan is coming. She did this again and again. You could tell by the nervousness of her voice she was doing this to warn other deceased humans and not come across like she was causing trouble. It made it look like she was praising Satan, but I think she was actually warning the people in that cafeteria. Everyone began dropping to their knees. A young male about age 19 or 20 looked very confused. He must have been newly deceased. He looked around and saw everyone kneeling down on the ground and he nervously knelt and put his tray of food on the ground. I can still see the image in my mind. It was very sad to see this happening. I felt such sadness for these people, but was also the most shocked and scared I have ever been, and immediately ran downstairs into another area. Question, for more than 20 years I followed a doctrine called Spiritism, which is very popular here in Brazil, which guides people to repair past life mistakes through reincarnation. What you say confirms the fact that these demons spread this lie everywhere so that people become docile to their orientations, that is, they become docile slaves. But, if in fact there is no paradise and no justification for the afflictions that people lived in this world, was Jesus then a liar or even a person who never even existed? Answer, that, spiritualism, is very dangerous and was made popular by Chico Xavier. He was a good person who got completely scammed, and his resulting writings have done incredible damage to humanity. His books were made into the movie, Nosso La, or, Astral City, A Spiritual Journey. This has caused an enormous amount of humans to step backwards and actually condition themselves and others to accept slavery. Jesus never existed. The Bible is a mind control tool that has subjugated humanity. Comic books have more value than the Bible. Although absurd, at least they promote superhuman abilities and going against evil forces. Question, I've heard theories that the tunnel of light is a trap. On the other hand, I've heard that the tunnel is just a representation to make transition easier, that we will inevitably have to meet our guides and discuss our next step in soul evolution, until we graduate this density. 
and maybe after that we will be the ones playing, guide. I've heard the journey never ends, and maybe our soul will become a planet, then a solar system, then cluster, then a galaxy, universe, etc. Until we merge with the infinity. Answer, the tunnel is an archon creation. It is a trap used to capture those who have died. The soul of the dying person is scanned and then fake images of lost loved ones are projected into the tunnel to coerce the targeted human to enter. There are no, guides. That is 100% bullshit. There is no, soul evolution. That also is 100% bullshit. No one, graduates. The death, memory arrays, reincarnation process goes on and on. The galaxy and universe you inhabit is a computer-driven simulation. What you know as, deep space, is only projected by the matrix when observed by a conscious being. New Age propaganda has done and continues to do enormous damage on humanity. The saddest part is that very good spiritual people are its worst victims. These humans are seen as, prime suckers, by the Archon hierarchy. These humans then go into agreement of brutally cruel and sadistic, soul contracts, and think it is giving them, soul growth. The only thing these ridiculous and embarrassing, soul contracts, do is create the perfect slave for loose energy production that is harvested by evil psychotic archons and the satanic demiurge. Hell is the, lower astral. I have been there and you may have also. It is the, land of nightmares. When someone has a brutally horrific nightmare it is likely they drifted into that realm. I have gone there through astral projection and it was horrible. Deceased murderers, molesters, psychopaths and the extremely violent choose to go there. They are attracted to it. There is also a higher astral. It looks like the, heaven, humans are taught. It has incredible colors and beautiful landscapes. No one resides there. It is used for programming purposes only. The extremely clean living deeply religious human as well the people who are having the near-death experience are brought to the higher astral for advertising. Some are even shown ridiculous images of, God on his throne. They are shown around and given a taste of its splendors. They are then told, they are not yet worthy to stay in the kingdom of heaven. The person in the NDE is told to go back. This programmed person returns to their body and later spews out endless advertising for religious beliefs and coerces people to enter the white light trap. The deceased human who was shown this ridiculous con job is then completely fixated on reincarnation and returning to the, earth school. What a joke. It is beyond absurd that humans are stupid enough to fall for this scam. Most people are very good people who have tried hard to survive in this world. You think about how hard humans have worked to help each other. All of this hard work is not rewarded. After death the human is still enslaved. There is no rest. The Archons and the Demiurge want everything. To get this they created the reincarnation scam. The self-declared, God, of this world is pure evil. It has used all of us. Humans have fought and died in wars for nothing. All of the suffering in this world is feasted upon by psychotic Archons and the satanic Demiurge. Good people work hard their whole lives. They deserve pure happiness after physical death. Instead they get a martial law afterlife and eventually get forced to reincarnate. It is not enough for the Demiurge to cause suffering worldwide. This crazed parasite won't even let deceased humans rest after death. It actually forced people to reincarnate again and again. The time has come to end this madness. Question, when the person's memories are erased, are they lost forever or are they somewhere in the unconscious, subconscious? Answer, the images and memories still exist within the deep subconscious. Sometimes pieces of these memories leak into the dream state and the conscious mind. The Archons are wiping the conscious mind and have basically perfected the process through practice on millions of human victims. They cannot wipe the subconscious, but really do not need to, because the majority of humans are mostly disconnected from the subconscious and completely fixated on the projected reality they see, out there. Memory arrays is the key to the enslavement of humanity. If people have complete access to the memory of the pre-reincarnation period they would rebel and end this madness. This is why the Archons had to create the whole, karmic debt, and, earth school, scams. This enabled them to get their victims to agree to memory arrays in belief that it was essential for their, soul growth. This brutally psychotic scam has been unchallenged for a long time.
New Age programming has taken over for religious-based mind control in molding and solidifying the perfect victims who in their ignorance actually praise and kneel to their oppressors. The Archons are known for telling some of their victims, it is your choice, in the early stages of the afterlife period. Humans are then under the assumption they are not forced. This is followed by constant long-term programming to break down the targeted human and to destroy any resistance and self-determination. The deceased human is relentlessly told they, made mistakes, to the point the human is so beaten down that they view themselves as unworthy. The targeted human has been prepped for the soul contract scam. Almost all humans are fully broken and mind-controlled at that point. They are manipulated to the point of thinking that reincarnation can, save them. There are exceptions and some will not give in. The Archons force these people into the memory arrays horror and reinsert them into slavery. The whole, choice, thing is another on of their scams to keep the slaves in line and avoid dissent. We are all inside of a huge, incredibly advanced virtual reality. This universe is a simulation. Most of, ancient history, never happened. It is an, ancestral simulation. Gods and saviors are literally myths. The Bible is the equivalent of a comic book. Unfortunately people have based their existence on upon fiction. My true origins are the same as everyone else trapped in this simulated hellhole. We are all originally from the, real free universe. There are no opportunities. Humans are used as slaves. There is nothing to gain. This entire simulation is a free-range slave pen used to create low vibrational energy which is consumed by satanic parasites who pose as higher beings. Reincarnation is the absolute worst thing anyone can do. Its purpose is to continue enslavement. There is no, live and learn. That is an archon scam that has been used to brutalize humanity. Thinking that some being, created you, promotes subservience and enslavement. The targeted human is being conditioned to accept the usage of, multiple lives. This person is being used for louche production in the dream state and being set up for the acceptance of reincarnation. There is nothing to overcome. This is the same, life lessons, bullshit that enslaved humanity. In this scenario it has been shrewdly played by the Archons. They instill a sense of bravado the target foolishly gets pumped up onto, to, face a challenge. How absurd. Cameron Day has talked about very similar experiences. He was targeted by the Archons at a young age and got fed the same lame script. He was sent on numerous quests and missions to overcome, doubts, and, fear, that, held him back in previous lives. The Archons are incredibly skilled at manipulation. It is their specialty. They regularly approach with this ridiculous scam and it usually works fantastic for them. They deeply program and mind control a human and also harvest dense low vibrational energy in the process. Question, in my dreams, I am gaining supernatural abilities. I am tying this with astral traveling. What are your thoughts? Answer, what you are experiencing is quite fantastic. You are actually using the dream realm for significant worthwhile training. I know exactly what you are doing, as I do the same. Using the dream realm to develop these abilities is a huge advantage. If you can eventually get yourself into the afterlife you will be a force to be reckoned with. These abilities are illegal in the afterlife and are what the Archons fear most. If developed and utilized by a resistance force these abilities can overthrow the Archons. I call the deceased humans who work for the Archons, sellout thugs. When they are certain someone is a living astral traveler these thugs panic. They are told very clearly that the living are never to be allowed to speak with the deceased. There are endless amounts of these thugs. It is the biggest source of employment in the afterlife. They will try to assault and capture the living traveler. One of them shot me in the arm with an advanced energy weapon. The pain was excruciating and I still felt in moments later upon returning to the physical. It is fascinating you are using your mental power to persuade beings in the dream realm. This is a real ability. The previously mentioned astral thugs have often tried to hit me with billy clubs, bats and metal pipes. Using what I call the, Jedi mind trick, I have made them hit themselves on numerous occasions. It is somewhat similar to telekinesis but you use intent to make it happen. I find the pineal gland area between the eyebrows, flexes, like a muscle when doing this. In this physical world I am a kind and caring gentleman. I seek true peace for all beings. 
In the astral afterlife rough confrontation is absolutely necessary. Telekinesis is my primary form of defense and it is incredibly powerful but must be regularly developed like a muscle. I have thrown huge objects there with telekinesis. The deceased barely know it even exists, because it is considered illegal and is seriously punished. Therefore it is rarely, if ever, seen by the deceased. I did meet one deceased guy who was very skilled at telekinesis. He told me he trained himself when he was alive by playing Star Wars, The Force Unleashed, and, Force Unleashed 2, video games. If done on a large television the mind considers it so lifelike it becomes similar to real telekinesis training. Flying can be more difficult. Consider it a huge achievement if you can do this with ease. Floating is very similar and much easier. I have floated up about 2 feet off the ground to escape sellout thugs on many occasions. Most of the very famous experts in astral travel and the institutes are now under the control of the three-letter agency. They are no longer mentioning archons. One of them who is very famous and previously talked about archons and the control system has started heavily promoting the fun afterlife and reincarnation and earth school scams. As this type of truth begins to be found by the public you will see more control and disinfo coming from previously trusted sources. The satanic global elite do the bidding of their archon masters. The archons demand shutting down the human awakening. The reptilians are unfortunately very real. I have seen them up close twice. They are the enforcers, who are the muscle within the archon hierarchy. They are horribly violent and psychotic. Reptilians completely despise humans. Question, in a video they talked about 24 layers of the astral. Are there really that many? How are they different? Answer, I have only heard about and seen three layers. The lower astral is the land of nightmares and is populated by deceased humans who resonate with violence and psychotic behavior. The middle astral is the afterlife. It looks the same as our physical dimension with houses and buildings. The upper astral is the fake kingdom of heaven. It looks beautiful and is used to con the deeply religious and extremely clean living. It is almost always shown to people having the near-death experience. The targeted human is always told, they are not yet worthy to stay in the kingdom of heaven. This is total bullshit. It is a complete archon scam. Comment, souls are getting shock treatment. The result of these massive electrical shocks is complete memory wipe. Answer, this was a very big topic recently on the Reddit Astral Projection sub. Numerous people saw this brutal horror being done during astral travel. These people were individuals and had traveled into the astral afterlife on separate occasions. Each one of these astral travelers were able to sneak into an afterlife area that is considered completely off-limits. What they saw was beyond horrifying, deceased humans were strapped down and had electrodes attached to them. They deceased are subjected to a series of sadistic and brutal massive electrical shocks to erase all memories to prepare the human victim for reincarnation into slavery. Those who fight the process are subjected to more and more horribly intense sessions of this psychotic torture until they are completely broken and all memory has been erased from the human victim. Once again, the so-called, higher beings, who demand this horribly cruel procedure are parasitic Satanists. They are the psychotic evil archons who have manipulated and herded humanity into endless slavery. You are their victims. Most aliens originate in the astral dimension. They have technology that allows them to open a portal for travel into the astral. Many victims of alien abduction talk about how the place they were in seemed very different and had a dreamlike quality to it. This is because many abduction victims are brought back into the astral dimension. Grey aliens are seen often by astral travelers. Reptilians are also seen. The video I posted a few days ago went into significant detail about how people involved in the CIA, Project Gateway, study on astral travel saw the reptilians most often during those experiences. That video was completely removed from the internet after it was posted on this thread. No one can find it anywhere. It got too much attention and was quickly removed by the NWO. It was previously available on many sites and it now erased from the internet. Some have said that a cube is the Archon spacecraft known as, the New Jerusalem. People have sent me emails saying that during experimentation with, altered states, they, woke up, in a tube similar to the one Neo was in in the first Matrix movie. 
Two different people told me they were approached a tall mantis type alien who angrily said, you will be punished. Go back to sleep. They were then repeatedly shocked with a strange device somewhat similar to a cattle prod. I am not saying their experiences are real, but I got emails from two different people from two different websites who had the same bizarre experience. After physical death all humans are forced to attend regular sessions with counselors. These counselors are deceased humans who are completely mind-controlled to serve the Archon agenda. They completely believe in the insidious, karmic debt, and, earth school, scams. These counselors constantly tell the deceased human target that they made, life mistakes, and these mistakes created, karmic debt. They will say this karmic debt created energetic imprints that must be balanced and removed. The counselors are mostly good people who are completely mind-controlled. They actually think they are promoting, the divine plan. What they actually do is enormous damage to all of humanity. After many years the targeted deceased human becomes defeated and is broken down to accept the fake karmic debt. The human is told they will be, given another chance in the earth school to repay this karmic debt. This is the cruelest and most evil scam. It is used on all deceased humans. The targeted human is now presented with, soul contracts. They are told to agree to these insane soul contracts to create, soul growth. The truth is there is no soul growth. There are no lessons. It is all a psychotic scam to create slaves. Before the human victim is reincarnated into slavery they are subjected to the brutally horrific memory erase process. During this process the deceased human is strapped down and implanted with electrodes. They are subjected to a long series of brutal shocks during this psychotic procedure. Some will fight but are basically tortured until they are broken down. This is unfortunately really happening. All deceased humans are subjected to this insane cruelty to prepare them for reincarnation into enslavement. Question, how goes the progress in the astral? Is there a war at all going on? Answer, the progress is slow. It is very difficult. The Archons have a huge amount of deceased humans who work for them. These security thugs pound on any human who questions the system. Because of this, most of the deceased are scared shitless and do not do anything. The afterlife I am visiting was explored by Robert Monroe a long time before I got there. All deceased humans who do not escape this simulation end up there. Deceased humans have different levels of mind control. Those who are programmed to accept, new age, beliefs get the worst scenarios. Sadly these are usually very nice people. New age programming is the worst. Its primary belief is that reincarnation is for, lessons, and, soul growth. This is 100% bullshit. There is no, lessons, or, soul growth. Those who are programmed by new age beliefs are presented with, soul contracts. These soul contracts are a cruel scam. Anyone who agrees to accept one of these insane, contracts, is completely screwed. These absurd soul contracts say the human is accepting a brutal lifetime that can include violence, molestation, torture and even human sacrifice. The targeted human is told these brutal hardships are perfect for, lessons, and, soul growth. Once again, this is a complete scam. These hardships are used to maximize loosh energy production from the targeted human. Seances, channelings and the Ouija board are always communication with demonic archons. The archons often pretend to be spirit guides or positive beings but are usually exposed at some point. My mindset is not affecting anything. Other people around the world have been doing this much longer than me. They come from many different backgrounds and have all seen the afterlife as extremely controlled. Wes Penray, August Telle, Cameron Day all come from different backgrounds and have different mindsets. They as well as others all have viewed the afterlife and its controllers as negative and extremely evil. I wish it was different. I always thought heaven would be total peace and beauty. That was my belief system going into this. Therefore I had no negative programming beforehand. I have been completely shocked at what has been seen. All, angels, are archons in disguise. In the afterlife the beings who claim to be the heavenly ancient, ascended masters, are complete scammers. They wear beautiful shiny robes and some even sit on thrones. The truth is that they are pure evil. All of it is for show to scam the deceased. The NDE is also a complete scam. Karma and karmic debt is fake.
The Archons are known to tell the extremely stupid, who are New Age mind-controlled, that they owe karmic debt from multiple previous lives, and must agree to take on a brutally difficult reincarnation to balance and pay off this debt. This is all total bullshit. It is cruel scam done to very good people who are mind-controlled by religion and New Age beliefs. Aliens have advanced tech that allows them to travel into the astral and back. The UFO and its occupants change the vibratory rate to accomplish this. It is said the NWO now has this tech as well. I have seen military troops and vehicles in the astral. I wondered if these were deceased humans or actually special ops who can cross over. I collect very old esoteric books. Many of these were written by secret society initiates. The knowledge was actually more open a hundred years ago than now. The Astral Brotherhood is mentioned quite often in arcane, esoteric literature. My opinion about Robert Monroe, Robert Monroe did not write that book, Ultimate Journey. The CIA completely took over his research. They had a ghost writer author the book. They also currently operate the Monroe Institute. The celebrity level master of astral projection, which I don't mention, is running the show there. Years ago he was very vocal about the brutal archons and their agenda. Now he has done a complete 180 and constantly says, the afterlife is great. Earth is a school for life lessons. Robert Monroe would be horrified to see what has become of his work. The satanic global elite are always many steps ahead. They know exactly how to manipulate things. The New Age agenda is going to, to be the focus point of the upcoming worldwide NWO religion. The insidious, Earth School, and, reincarnation, scams will be taught to the public. People stay at the institute and pay huge money for their courses. They have a very famous master of astral projection who teaches there. He constantly now spouts the Earth School and Heaven is great scams. That really shocked me. He used to talk about the evil archons. Now he seems to have completely forgotten about them. My theory is they do not want the Gateway Reptilian video out here. Imagine if someone shows up at the institute or at one of their huge seminars and asks about this as well as Lush. They would be horrified if someone mentioned actual gateway experiments that contacted reptilians. My guess is hardly any of these current gateway teachers and practitioners even know about the reptilians or Lush. It is all new age programming instead. The elite are in overdrive right now trying to contain the awakening of humanity. The original recordings by Monroe are the Holy Grail. Very few of those real gateway recordings still exist. They are definitely safe, and from what I have been told absolutely work, and create spectacular results the NWO has neutered the currently available version. They turned a powerful vehicle for transformation into new age relaxation nonsense. Question, tell me more about King Midas like beer. Answer, there is a large frat house located a few blocks from Moore World. I went to numerous wild parties there a few years ago. The building is still there, but the group of people who resided there have moved to other areas in the astral. The people living there now are very boring. When I went to the parties there everyone was extremely friendly. It was basically drink huge amounts of King Midas beer, which seems to be the only beer everyone drinks. There was many beautiful women and everyone was fun and respectful. Most interesting was I would get completely drunk there, but be totally sober back in the physical dimension, although very tired. Several blocks from the frat house is a bizarre and incredibly grotesque complex known as, the Evil Hospital, also known as Hospital World. It contains numerous huge hospital buildings that are connected. Most astral travelers comment on the weird elevators that come from the complex and go in many different directions. The hospital is extremely disturbing. Brutally horrifying experiments are being performed throughout the large buildings. It finally became clear to me last night during astral travel. The overcoming of fear in the dream state were a major factor in this realization. I was being chased by a group of astral security thugs. I stopped and turned around. At that point I shouted, I am God. I am the true God. I am the creator of this world. I forgot who I was and your leaders took control. They completely stopped in their tracks. They looked absolutely confused. Some of them actually looked scared, while a few looked very angry and were screaming let's get him. They had certainly never seen anything like this before. I was totally pumped up with energy. I decided to go all out and really make a strong declaration. 
I said, I am the true God. I am the true creator. At that point I got really dramatic and screamed, you will kneel in my presence. You will kneel to the true God. They turned around and ran away. It is possible they were only confused, but I could feel the energy during this. I then understood, you do not need the one to save you. You do not need to escape and seek refuge in the one. With all of your being you truly remember who you are, and realize the one is you. The astral should be a place of fun and exploration. That is what it was for me in the beginning. I would be exploring astral cities. Going into the bars and nightclubs. I was just minding my business and not looking for trouble. Then as I started talking to her and hanging out with deceased people, I noticed many would become very scared when I told them I was still alive. It soon became clear why they were scared. I started getting approached by the astral law enforcement goons. They are asshole psychopaths. They told me to never communicate with the deceased. When I asked why not, they answered me with billy clubs and relentless force. The truth became clear when some of the astral counselors told me straight up they worship Satan. This seemed insane. Some of those deceased humans in supervisory positions within the Archon hierarchy are so arrogant they proudly admit they worship and work for the satanic demiurge. I now realize the only way to respond to these maniacs is by declaring yourself as the true God. Telling them you are the eternal creator. If they do not respect that, then physical confrontation in the astral is necessary. People stay the same in the astral. There is no aging for anyone in the afterlife. Eating food is done by choice, but is not necessary. From what I have seen the very young are watched over by mostly teenagers. Deceased humans aged 18 to 35 seem completely out of control. They are mostly focused on constant romantic encounters with different people, various forms of intoxication, and physical violence with each other. I have found males in this age category to be extremely difficult to communicate with due to their volatile and ludicrous behavior. People need to understand. You will eventually meet these astral psychopaths. After physical death if you do not escape the simulation you will have to deal with them. It is better to train your mind now in advance. A few years ago I spoke with someone who was from the southwest USA. He said he had sought out both Mexican curandero shamans and Native American medicine men. He spent considerable periods with each on his vision quest. During this period he was experimenting with many Native American and Mexican herbs and also the Native American sweat lodge. During this exploration he said he communicated directly with a consciousness that calls itself, the architect, and that this is the Matrix AI. This, architect, told him that, humans choose to worship. Therefore they are victims to be exploited. About ten years ago I began seeing regular signs of this in the afterlife. It was very confusing at first as this went against all we are told by earth-based religions. As time went on, I began speaking with the deceased more and more. There was then no doubt at that point. The real shocker came about five years ago as I was speaking directly to an afterlife counselor who confirmed all of it was completely true. This guy was very arrogant and confidant of the divine plan. He told me the full truth and held nothing back. He said that all human choices and actions form energetic imprints, which create the karmic debt. When I said that would mean the horrible cruelty and savage enslavement by the Archons would make them owe more karma than anyone in existence. Upon hearing this he became incredibly angry and violent. He had nothing else to say because he knew I was aware of the scam. The Archons' whole scam is based upon karma. People in the afterlife to have jobs. Musicians, bartenders, strippers, etc. The most common employment in the afterlife is law enforcement and security. They are all over the place. Some of them are good people who got conned. Others openly accept the Archon agenda and brutally beat the shit out of anyone who questions authority or gets out of line. So yes, it is very possible that will influence the career choice in the next enslaved lifetime. People frequently change races. This is because the Archons like to put humans who accept the con job into lifetimes that will maximize loosh energy production. There are border regions, but people can go where they like, as long as they do not question authority or the Archon agenda. Be very careful, as people from India are known to reincarnate much quicker than others. The Indian people are very good people. 
Unfortunately most get easily conned into agreement of karma, and the karmic debt and earth school scams. The deceased human is subjected to long-term programming from the afterlife counselors. This occurs in large classrooms in university-type buildings. This goes on for years. The objective is to break down the targeted human and create a sense of low self-self-worth and guilt towards the recently completed physical life. The fake concepts of karma and karmic debt are continuously presented to the human victim. Later in the indoctrination the earth school scam is heavily promoted. In the period right before memory arrays the targeted human is presented with soul contracts. These completely insane contracts allow for the human to be put into specific scenarios in the coming reincarnation. If the deceased human is very accepting of the entire scam process they are seen as prime suckers. Those who are very religious are told this is an opportunity to enter the kingdom of heaven after the upcoming very hard lifetime. The human never gets into heaven. The same script is used on them again and again. Those who are really into New Age beliefs are the biggest targets. They are told that extreme hardships including a lifetime of beatings, molestation, and possibly abduction, torture and human sacrifice would create incredible, soul growth, for them. This is a 100% complete scam. There is no such thing as, soul growth. The New Age believer is then horrifically brutalized during the next incarnation. The only reason for this is that it creates huge amounts of loose energy from the fear, pain, and suffering. The loose energy is then consumed by the evil archons and the crazed master, the satanic demiurge. After the human agrees to the soul contract, the human counselors show them a few choices of scenarios they will be placed in. The choices are usually very similar. This is where new age morons say they got to choose their parents. In actuality, the counselors are given a few different choices made by the archons. These choices are then shown to deceased targeted human. The archons are known for aggressively lying as well as misrepresenting an upcoming incarnation. The fact is that no one should agree to soul contracts. No one should agree to memory arrays and reincarnation. The only purpose of all of this madness is to keep the human enslaved to produce loose energy. With memories erased the human is an endless loop of life, death, reincarnation. This is enslavement. It must be stopped. The huge majority of humans live outside of the simulation and are free. People in the simulation are slaves. The archons have promoted the illusion there is free will in the simulation. Because of this, the free humans do not intervene. This has gone on for a long time. At this point it seems the archons no longer care about promoting that illusion. They are going for it all. The Archons seek to permanently cut off the simulation from the real free universe. They had their Illuminati initiates create the frequency fence that circles the planet. They want absolutely no one escaping. With the coming AI being developed by the satanic global elite, they seek to put all soul beings into a matrix within the matrix. At that point any hope of escape to the real free universe basically ends. This is why it is of such urgency to wake up humanity before it is too late. Question, have you ever heard the strange, beep, during astral traveling? Answer, every once in a while when I just wake up I hear a loud, beep. I do not keep an alarm clock in my bedroom or any other type of devices. I am very familiar with hypnogogia, and its images and sounds. This is absolutely not hypnogogia or any illusion. This is real. It is a beep that happens very quickly upon waking up. Most people never hear it. The difference is that I am highly skilled at the out of body and meditative states. I am completely awake and aware when I wake up. This does not happen often. It is very rare. But every once in a while you catch it. It is a beep coming from the matrix. It alerts the controllers when you have returned to the physical dimension. My theory is the beep alerts the controllers when a person has re-entered back from astral travel. It is said the NWO shadow government has advanced tech that alerts them to when an alien or cryptid crosses over and enters our realm through a portal. It must be similar technology. The most disturbing part is that it reinforces the fact that this universe is a computer-driven simulation. About life in the astral world, I was raised in a loving Christian home and did Bible study for years when I was very young. Unfortunately I now know the exact truth of our reality. This universe is a simulation. 
It is controlled by crazed psychopaths known as the Archons. All humans go to the same place, the astral afterlife. I was actually there last night. It is a very unpleasant place. All humans are allowed to stay there for roughly 30 years. They are then subjected to a horrific process that erases their memories. All humans are then reincarnated again and again. It is very difficult to hear this. Sadly it is the actual truth. Souls cannot be destroyed. They can be significantly damaged to the point of almost complete subjugation. This is our shocking reality. You have real souled creator gods who have been horrendously beaten down and turned into mindless slaves. Karmic debt and reincarnation is the major reason for this. No one can get ahead. The knowledge and skill they gain is erased by the psychotic archons after physical death. Earth is not a school. There are no lessons. In fact, the archons have almost everyone going backwards in development. Enlightened Buddhist masters from 100 years ago are now reincarnated into moronic fools who know nothing. Full confrontation against the archons is necessary. This madness must come to an end. The world is going to get much worse with the completion of the satanic NWO. Use your time wisely and develop yourselves now, before it is too late. You are your own savior. Recent experiences I had in the astral afterlife, suddenly I am in a suburban neighborhood. I am standing on a small baseball field surrounded by fences about 20 feet high. This place looks somewhat familiar, but I am not exactly sure. I float myself over the fence and land on the street. I begin walking around. This looks any neighborhood you would see in the USA. Approaching a street going downhill I decide to float up and coast along about 15 feet off the ground. Coming to a stop I recognize this building. It is a three-story apartment building. There is a Jim Morrison poster in a window of one of the units. I enter the building and walk in the apartment. This is where a deceased relative is now living with her boyfriend. Sadly, the deceased can undergo significant personality changes in the astral afterlife. This is due to no longer interacting with the still living friends and family they left behind. An additional factor is that negative behaviors such as violence, substance abuse, perversions, and random sexual encounters are heavily promoted by the controllers. They want people occupied and distracted. As long as they do not question the archons and their agenda, anything goes. This relative was the kindest and most caring person you could meet. She has changed into an arrogant and foul-mouthed jerk who has been programmed by the horrible people she is friends with in the afterlife. It is difficult enough to see someone you care about is dead and now in a bad place. It is much worse to see them become insulting and hostile towards you. I decide these narcissists need to be put in their place during this visit. There is a very loud and outrageous party happening in the apartment above. Heading up there I invite all of the party participants to come downstairs and trash the place. Things quickly get out of control to the point that the afterlife law enforcement quickly shows up. These goons always arrive very quickly and enjoy pounding on anyone who they think is questionable. Looking out the window, I see them putting people in line single file. The afterlife law enforcement are total psychopaths. Any interaction with them is trouble. I wonder if there has been people who get captured by them and never make it back to the physical body. Using telekinesis I smash a window open and float, fly out the window. At this point I am hovering about 50 feet off the ground and decide to leave the area. This is different from the type of flying you would see Superman do. I am standing straight up and taking very long strides. It looks almost like I am jogging. The difference is I am 50 feet off the ground and I am pushing myself forward with my arms similar to a swimmer doing a breaststroke motion. Crossing numerous fields I am now hovering in the air. Below is a small local airport with a few dirt runways. In the distance I can see a man in an elevated control tower. A small plane goes by. It is maybe a 100 feet away at most. This plane is like none I have ever seen before. It is incredibly futuristic. Another one approaches a few seconds later. The technology of these planes is much more advanced than what we would see in our dimension. I decide this is not a good place to hang around and begin my movement through the air again. Up ahead there is a small object floating at my height. It is a drone of some sort and looks technologically advanced. It seems to be heading towards me. 
Not wanting trouble I quickly exit the area and am now crossing numerous streets with cars driving under me. Landing on the ground I see many nice houses. There is a business on the other side of the street. It is some type of video surveillance business. There is a luxury car parked in front of it. Whomever owns the place seems to be doing well for themselves financially. There are some that live in very luxurious houses, but most regular people in the afterlife are struggling from what I have seen. Above me there is a cable that seems like it is for a tram or trolley. I decide to grab onto it and travel into this busy downtown area. This is similar to traveling on zip line except I have one hand holding onto this cable. As I go along I see many people walking around, shopping etc. I wonder who they were. What happened to them? I feel great sadness knowing they are dead. They cannot get back to the physical dimension. Their silver cord is gone, and there is no suitable body waiting for them to return to. Most do not even notice, but a few see me cruising by above them. They look shocked and I know why. Any type of floating, flying, or traveling above ground is completely prohibited. I have seen some people do it there, but it is very rare. They are scared of the consequences and allow themselves to be limited and subjugated. This is very sad considering they all have the ability to float, fly, and do telekinesis if they wanted to. A few minutes later I let go of the cable and come to a stop on the ground. This is a shady part of town. It seems every city in town has one of these red light districts. Numerous strip clubs and gambling halls occupy both sides of the street. People are all around and many look very intoxicated. Others simply look lost and hopeless. Further down the road is an attractive looking nightclub. I decide to go inside and hang out. A doorman is taking a cover charge from the people in line. This is hard to explain, but I make money appear in my pocket to cover the expenses. Heading inside, the place is very nice actually. It is clean and classy. The theme appears to be music from the 1980s and the song, One Thing Leads to Another, is playing quite loudly. People are conversing. Many are speaking in a mix of English and French. For those who want to make the difficult afterlife realm somewhat easier, I would highly suggest you learn to speak French. Or at least be able to understand what the French speaker is saying. The afterlife is bilingual. English is spoken almost everywhere, but you will hear French being spoken quite often. The white light tunnel is a portal into the astral afterlife. When a deceased human enters the light they will eventually exit into an area known as, the processing center. This is a huge building with offices and significant security. The deceased are registered and given a synopsis of where they are and what is allowed. Most of the deceased stay in cramped dormitory style housing until they can afford to get an apartment. Relatives that died earlier may have housing for them when they arrive. Some choose to immediately live outside and on the street. The age you died at, is the same age you will see yourself as having in the afterlife. Afterwards many people stay at the age they were when they died. Some can then choose to look younger. This is all conditional on one's individual belief system. I have some met people who were elderly and died from horrible injuries in car accidents. Because they have control of their inner beliefs and have visualization ability, they now look 35 years old and have no injuries. A relative of mine passed away at age 70. He entered the afterlife looking that age. I saw him recently and he now looks about 30. Someone else passed away at 75. He now looks about 60. Changes, if any, will vary on belief system and comfort level. Other people continue to walk around on crutches and look old and frail. They refuse to believe they have the ability to change their appearance. The programmed, victimization mentality, society ingrained into them their whole lives cannot be shaken. A close friend of mine killed himself. I have visited him many times over the years in the afterlife. When I told him the anguish his mother went through, he had deep regret about doing it. I have met many other previously unknown people in the afterlife who also died that way. Most addicts will continue with their addictions. The afterlife is loaded with people who are really messed up from various things. The archons promote addictions, perversions, and violent behavior. They want humans distracted and controllable. The population in the astral afterlife is significantly smaller than that of the physical dimension. It is also much smaller in size. 
The deceased are forced out and into reincarnation after 30 years. There is also no one being born there. They are harvesting louche there as well. The difference is that so-called, matter, is much less dense in the astral. It can be molded and formed with directed thought. Objects can be moved by telekinesis and feel almost empty when you move them. Even when you feel stress and pain it feel less dense and somewhat loose and non-binding. This would be because of the semi-physical nature of the afterlife itself. When focusing and giving great attention to the projected physical form it seems to make things feel more, real, but it is much easier to comprehend the objects in the astral as mere, holograms. I think these factors significantly reduces the production and harvesting of louche in the astral. It is also worth mentioning that people are very aloof there. Many are scared and desperate, but a very large amount have no focus on cause and effect. They go through random sexual encounters and violent interactions and show no concern for outcome. Although you can feel pain, they know they cannot die from anything in the astral. I think this reduces louche production as many have a, could care less, attitude. The brilliant John J. Fallone, author of the must-read book, The Genius Frequency, has said the astral is expanding and will eventually completely overlap and merge with the physical dimension. At that point there would be one huge dimension. If this actually happens, he believes the matrix to be very slowly depreciating and this contributes to the ultimate merging of the two dimensions. It remains to be seen. For a long time the Archons have presented the illusion of free will and that humans were choosing to be subjugated. Having two distinct dimensions, one for life and one for death, has allowed them to create the deception of the Earth School. The targeted humans are herded and harvested in the physical dimension. They are conned into believing the physical dimension is the Earth School area and it must be completely separate dimension from the afterlife evaluation area. Having a physical dimension perpetuates the karmic debt scam as well. The targeted human is told later in the afterlife evaluation period of the large amounts of karma created through physical actions. An afterlife counselor told me that because the physical dimension is so dense that all actions create energetic imprints that form the karma. In actuality, my theory is that the so-called karma is actually louche. It has nothing to do with right or wrong. The so-called karma being created is dense low vibrational energy. Energies produced in the astral are of a higher vibration because of the semi-physical incarnation. This leads to the nature of the scam, telling the targeted human the bad choices created karma. They now must agree to severe hardships to balance and pay off that debt. What is really happening is the human is conned into an upcoming lifetime with significant stress causing scenarios. This creates more louche that is consumed by the parasites. They then tell the human after the next life is over of the bullshit, karma, that was just created. Through the continuous karmic scam the enslavement cycle continues again and again. The afterlife processing center in a huge office building complex with multiple floors. There are cameras all over the place and it has turnstiles with security guards about every 100 feet. They do not want anyone exploring other areas. I do not follow their rules and have explored that building several times. You can lift up or even smash the cameras with telekinesis, although no one does it. During an exploration I was watching a small group of men and women doing military-style drills. They seemed to be recruits for astral law enforcement. It was disturbing as they only looked 19 or 20 years old. As I stood there for a few minutes I then noticed a young man from that squad pointing a rifle at me from about 10 feet away. He had seen me doing telekinesis earlier and figured out I was not welcome there. He proceeded to shoot me in the arm, from what I now think was a laser rifle. It produced a significant burning pain and I could really feel it. The architecture in the afterlife changes as time moves on. It was more simplistic long ago to match with their belief system. Many things now look ordinary, although the cities are incredibly modern. Keep in mind the Archons have ultra-advanced technology. The tech there is much more advanced than what we see in our daily lives. If you were to go into the afterlife suburbs you would see regular-looking houses, shops, and buildings. But at the same time, there could be a local airport in that same neighborhood, with incredibly advanced planes. You could start trouble and be approached by regular-looking law enforcement driving regular modern vehicles. 
but those same people may have laser rifles and apprehension devices that appear incredibly futuristic. There is countryside and open spaces. I was just at a large bilingual beach community there called, the French Islands. It would have been really enjoyable if the psychotic afterlife law enforcement was not all over the place. Question, from your astral projections, do you know what happens when someone is wise to their karma con and says it to their faces? I.e. Openly rebellious. I would really like to know, thanks. Answer, I was told there was an uprising against the Archons led by four men. There may have been others with the men, but it is almost impossible to get people to talk about it. It seems to be illegal to talk about them. It is difficult to get exact details on when this happened. I think it was about 20 years ago. Sadly, this group known as, the Four, were defeated and captured. From what I was told they were put in jail, and later tortured and forced to reincarnate. Someone else told me the Archons have slave labor camps in the afterlife for people who challenge them. Hearing this might make some people scared and now unwilling to challenge the evil Archons. It makes me even more focused and determined to destroy them. I have made my decision and I am going against them, even if I have to do it alone. Some would say it is, crazy, and impossible. But deep within I know it can be done. Recently I have made huge advancements in the astral. I have discovered I have the ability to change my physical appearance. The so-called, astral body, absolutely can be molded by thought and visualization. I was recently in the afterlife with a very old and frail elderly relative. It took significant work to get through to him and show him how to transform. Now he is in the afterlife and looks like a very muscular 25-year-old. Anyone can do this. I now wonder if I can make myself 10 feet tall. Perhaps there are no limits except those programmed into the mind. We are in a holographic simulation. The solid world around us is an illusion. This is actually our salvation. It means physical matter and strict linear progression can be changed and transformed by the incredible power of the self-directed eternal creator that we all are. I will never give up. I choose to be different than the programmed mind control slaves. I choose to be, crazy. The Archons are masters of manipulation. They will appear in their shiny robes posing as ascended masters and spirit guides to the deceased. They will demean the targeted human telling them of the bad choices that created, karmic debt. If karmic debt was actually real, the evil archons would owe more than anyone in history. They commit the most evil acts against souled beings. When the time comes to confront them, their enormous list of offenses they have committed must be thrown in their faces. The time has come to no longer be judged by brutally evil psychotic charlatans. The Archons need to be held accountable for their enslavement of soul beings. If you do not escape the Matrix after physical death and you end up in the astral afterlife, prepare yourself now for a plan of action. You can either stay quiet, get judged by insane parasites and accept memory arrays and reincarnation. Or you can finally take a stand and declare yourself as a free sovereign being who will no longer be enslaved by anyone. Whoever you are big or small, if you seek real freedom you will need to tell them they are savage liars who have denied the free will of soul beings. Resistance is absolutely necessary. This knowledge will most likely no longer be available in your next physical lifetime. At that point all humans will be microchipped. Crucial information will have been censored and history possibly rewritten. Continue living a healthy life, but make your personal transformation a hobby that is regularly practiced. Spirit guides are all archons in disguise. To keep the deception going many of them will tell the targeted human about real things in their lives. This hooks the targeted human who will then create, advertising, that spirit guides tell the truth. This is very similar to the, near-death experience, scam that has also mind-controlled most new age devotees. You never hear of spirit guides informing humans of the shocking truth of the astral afterlife. They also will never mention the Archons or the psychotic evil acts they commit against soul beings. This universe has been one huge manipulation. Humans are mislead and lied to in so many areas. We are raised and indoctrinated in scam religions created by the Archons. Humans wait for mythical saviors who will never show up. I cannot stress enough that everything the Archons will tell you after death is all lies used to enslave you. 
Basically, entities that are a million times worse than a psychotic serial killer are posing as higher beings. These despicable parasites denigrate and judge deceased humans over and over again. The Archons created the Karmic Debt and Earth School scams that have enslaved all humans on this planet. When you understand and really look at them, those scams are absolutely ridiculous, and it is beyond absurd that they have been able to pull it off this long. About my astral experience with an alien disguised as a woman, many others have fallen for women in the same fashion. I had an interesting experience in which I met a beautiful woman who brought me into a strange technologically advanced building. She was very intent on getting me to go into the facility and to enter a dimly lit room on the lower level. The building made me very uncomfortable, and I then saw her lose control and shift back into what appeared to be an alien. She tried to convince me by projecting an image of a young woman on a beach into my mind. This entity seemed inexperienced at this manipulation attempt and was suddenly angrily reprimanded by another alien had been hiding behind the scenes. This supervisory alien who appeared to be male, although they both seemed sort of genderless, was openly hostile and said to me, you will be kept here for experimentation purposes. I was extremely nervous and left immediately. But it was a shocking thing to experience. Other astral travelers have told me the horror they felt, when the beautiful woman they were kissing or having sex with, suddenly shifted back to its true form. Demons are looking to absorb energy but also seem to enjoy very perverse behaviors. In the afterlife there are also entities that are not demons or aliens that are known as charmers. These charmers are deceased humans, usually males, who have the ability to scan a person's energy field and pick up images of people the targeted human has been recently thinking of. Although rarely seen, these charmers get cruel thrills by pretending to be a friend or relative of the targeted human. They also cloak themselves as attractive women to fool others into sexual encounters with them. The way to avoid almost all of this is to really develop awareness in the out-of-body state. This can also be developed through regular focused visualization during meditation. The light has not won. Nothing has changed in the simulation. The Matrix AI is still in complete control. These so-called lightworkers, who say the astral has been liberated are role players who have no idea what they are talking about. The demons and vampires are not gone. Nothing has changed. What we are trying to do is very important. Let's try to focus on information of very high quality. There are many people making YouTube videos who have no idea what they are talking about. If we are going to wake up people we need to show them excellent research. A few years ago there was a guy named, Cobra, who was putting out material on the internet that was very popular. He was saying how he and his, White Knights, had defeated the Archons and ended reincarnation. Everything he said was completely wrong. Either it was all made up, it was role-playing, or it was a deliberate psyop to mislead people. It did incredible damage because many who were looking to challenge the Archon system now think it is over and everything will be great. Many stopped their transformation and went back to sleep. The Archons are incredibly powerful. They are not going to be removed by a few role-players who have good intentions. We are all friends here. We need to work together. Let's stay focused and keep posting high-quality information. Mantis aliens are real. They are extremely hostile to humans and are part of the Archon hierarchy. Two different people from another website contacted me and told me of how each had been experimenting with different forms of altered states. Each person woke up in a huge room in pods somewhat similar to those seen in the first Matrix movie. Neither of these people knew each other and both told me the same thing was experienced. Both woke up in a strange pod filled with a pink sand-like substance. Both were extremely confused as to what they were experiencing. Both people were approached by a mantis alien that was angry and told them, go back to sleep. Each person was then shocked with a device that looked somewhat similar to a cattle prod and passed out. If there is truth, I am not sure at this point, to these two experiences, it would mean we are inside this simulated universe, and our actual physical bodies are unconscious in a universe above this one. This is hinted to in the recent Amazon film about computer simulated realities called, Bliss. In the film a group of physicists are at a function, and one of them is doing a presentation. He says this universe is a simulation within a simulation and so on. That it is, turtles all the way down. 
The implications of this are shocking. There are a growing number of physicists who subscribe to belief that we are in a simulation within a simulation, within a simulation. After physical death you will be approached by an archon cloak to appear as a wise old man, or angelic woman. They will say how they also went through the same challenge, and through it achieved growth and knowledge from that earth school experience. This is 100% bullshit and a complete scam. Almost all archons never incarnate in the physical dimension. They faced no ridiculous challenges and had no absurd growth. The only members of the hierarchy that lived human lives long ago are the very few low-level members. These type of cruel scams are used constantly. Many innocent and trusting humans are manipulated into far worse soul contract agreements. People who are deeply mind-controlled by New Age beliefs are prime targets. All religion is used to enslave humans. Members of specific religions are told they are very close, but not yet ready to enter the kingdom of heaven. The truth is that there is no angelic heaven. The targeted human is shown holographic imagery of a Christian type heaven, with fake angels and Christ on a throne. Members of other religions are shown religious propaganda that fits with their programmed belief systems. All of this is a scam. This universe is fake. It is a simulation. The saddest part is the psychotic archon controllers completely made up absurd religions with fake saviors. The success the archons have had with this is astounding. Humans fight each other in the name of religion and never question the evil system that savagely controls them. Question, can you be harmed or killed in the astral afterlife? Answer, this is an interesting question. Many deceased people in the afterlife think you you can be killed there and would then no longer exist. I think this is completely wrong. Assault and violence are very common in the afterlife. As long as no one threatens or merely questions the Archon hierarchy and the afterlife programming system, violent behavior is tolerated. On many occasions I have seen people repeatedly stab each other. The deceased feel pain and do bleed, but it seems to vary. I have seen men stab each other back and forth and fall in horrendous pain and suffering, and others who then just walk away from it. It appears that some have come to fully understand the astral body does not die. Those people seem to have much less pain. This makes it clear that the more you think the astral body is physical, the more pain and injury you can suffer. Be aware this seems to come from experience. I would not recommend just showing up in the astral and thinking nothing will happen. I have been punched and hit with bats and pipes, as well as shot with some type of energy weapon, on numerous occasions. From that I felt real significant pain. Although it seems to get less painful each time, as my inner mind began to clearly understand the astral body is not that dense and is actually very fluid and malleable. This can also revert backwards if not kept in check. As you later forget and then see familiar buildings and cars around you, eat food, and indulge in sexual scenarios, the mind can begin to fall back into the belief of dense physical matter once again. Understanding this is very important. Most of the deceased still subscribe to the same beliefs as seen in the physical dimension. They think they can be significantly hurt and possibly die. Because of this most are petrified to challenge the Archon hierarchy. They see the afterlife law enforcement carrying multiple weapons and that scares them into submission. My theory is that with constant focused beliefs, and clear understanding of the semi-fluid nature of the astral body, that liberation can occur. If you can avoid pain and injury from your deeply held belief system, and then begin to mold the so-called objects around you, they cannot hold you. This should be of the utmost importance. Training should begin now in the dream state. I have seen deceased people being taken away in chains and shackles by afterlife law enforcement. It is said they are sent to slave labor camps. The good news is that with the properly trained mind they would not be able to contain you. If you can reach and maintain that level you would be able to escape their clutches. This takes regular focused mental effort. People who are religiously programmed and expect a peaceful, heaven, all end up horrified and totally vulnerable. All people that have woken up and questioned the system will be targeted after physical death. You can either kneel down and worship the satanic archon hierarchy as a slave, or you can stand up and declare yourself a true and free eternal creator. The real objective is to make the self an entity that cannot be subjugated and contained. About astral time travel. Last night I experienced an adventure like no other. 
During this incredibly bizarre and exciting experience I visited three distinct locations. The reason this stands out, is they were all in individual time periods very different from our current one. In the first segment, I spent roughly two hours in what I was told was 1935. There was a huge party happening inside an enormous facility. The people were dressed very formally. The women were beyond beautiful. They looked very classy, but at the same time stunningly approachable and attractive. I have never really watched very old movies, and seeing this in such detail was fascinating. The only reference point I had, was it was very much like the look of, The Great Gatsby. I wandered around looking in this huge social club. Numerous black and white photos were on the walls of people, mansions, and exotic locations. Looking at them I wondered who were those people. What was their story that is now long forgotten? Big band music was being loudly played. People were dancing and aggressively drinking martinis and champagne. Some of the women had on scarves and furs over their shoulders. They all wore strange hats. I began to think I had entered into a matrix period of long ago. My theory is this point in time is stored in the matrix hard drive, and somehow I was able to access it. This time and place seemed so fun and without conflict. I did not want to leave. You could see how easily these men were falling for these hedonistic beauties. Instantly I am now in a time which seemed to be about 1950. The change was very dramatic. Everyone looks very conservative and uptight. The way they are dressed reminds me of a DVD collection my aunt has called, Ozzy and Harriet. In both eras the people could see me and I could talk to them. The people in the 1935 era were super friendly and outgoing. 1950s seems ultra sterile and boring. I notice I am wearing modern day clothing. The 1950 people are horrified and looking at me like I am Frankenstein. A group actually starts to form and come towards me, and they looked as if they were going to destroy a monster. Quickly deciding to protect myself I yelled, I am future man from space. Upon hearing this they completely freak out and all run away. This has been absolutely bizarre. I am wondering how this happened to begin with. In an instant I am standing barefoot on a cold floor in a extremely modern building. A man in suit walks by. He has the appearance of someone in charge. I say to him, I am very confused. Is this a simulation? He answers, of course it is. Why would you even need to ask? He seems agitated and may know I am an outsider. I begin to get dizzy and almost fall over. At that point I notice he is gone. Walking over to a table there is two women seated. I ask them where this is. They respond it is a facility outside of Toronto. This place looks high tech and about 20 years ahead of our current time. One woman says to me was your trip different from last week. I am now very shocked and confused. I do not know them and have never seen this facility before. I was definitely not there last week. I have had experiences before in which I was traveling in what seemed to be someone else's avatar. Robert Monroe talked about doing this for an ongoing extended period in the book, Catapult, the biography of Robert Monroe. Strangely enough, that book is the only place I have seen him talk about this other dimension he was living in during the OBE. Zovalix correctly said Monroe's work was very likely edited by the powers that be. I wonder if they did intentionally remove those specific experiences as the, I, there, from his books. For some reason it is only shown in that biography and is definitely worth reading. To recap, last night saw the experience of fascinating time travel through the Matrix. The last portion many have been in someone else's avatar. I have read a large amount of very old and mostly forgotten esoteric literature. Some of those books exposed more truth than what is even known in modern times. Those writings were created by highly informed initiates of secret societies and dark magic. Since they were not really read by much of the general public, they were never edited or destroyed. There was numerous examples of what was called, the devil, and, Jehovah, that depicted it as a reptilian. The reptilians are real and have a much larger role than was previously thought. They may be at the absolute top of the Archon hierarchy. I have seen them up close twice during astral travel. It is beyond shocking when you really see them. The life review is performed by entities posing as spirit guides and ascended masters. At the highest level is their lords of karma, also known as the council. 
These charlatans are actually the most evil and psychotic beings in history. They have no business judging anyone else. The fact that someone so purely evil and deceptive is doing this to humans is beyond ridiculous. The targeted human is shown real images from the recently completed physical lifetime. The Matrix is basically a giant virtual reality system. The images are similar to saved computer files. Many times additional images are shown that have nothing to do with the targeted human. The person is told they were a serial killed or maniac in a lifetime many times before. This is total manipulation and the images are from a person who have no connection to the targeted human. Those same images may be used on numerous people. The targeted human is then completely lied to and cruelly told they were incredibly evil many lifetimes before. Because of that they still have, lessons, and, karmic debt, to pay off and balance. All of this is part of a huge very successful scam that keeps humans trapped in an ongoing cycle of reincarnation into slavery. This never should have happened to begin with. The time has come for this horrendous manipulation to end. How the matrix grid works. The grid maintains the dense rigid structure of seemingly physical objects. So I was driving around in the city and reading the grid psychically and I noticed how rigid the grid structures are there. And I realized that because it's a populated area with a lot of complex geometrical shaped objects the grid roots a lot of energy into trying to maintain the dense rigid structure of those objects. The grids in cities and populated areas are very rigid and reinforced with a lot of energy. But in less populated areas the grid structures are less rigid and complex and there is less energy put into maintaining them. So I finally realized something. The grid doesn't just maintain the dense rigid structure of objects. It also functions as a subconscious mind for the entire planet. If there are any astral travelers here you will know that consensus realities are maintained by the subconscious minds of the inhabitants. But maintained by the subconscious minds of the inhabitants. The grid has taken that to an extreme and it acts as a subconscious mind for the entire planet. The grid tracks every object on the planet. And power is rooted to maintain the dense rigid structure of those objects in populated areas. In areas that aren't populated it probably doesn't give a damn. But if people go out there it quickly roots energy into the local grid. So it's like a subconscious network for the entire planet. But it doesn't just maintain the dense rigid structure of objects. It also maintains reality programs. The grid is mostly the cause of the laws of physics. The grid runs reality programs that impose limitations on the population. It's very complex and even I don't totally understand it. But the grid maintains not just the dense rigid structure of objects but the dense rigid structure of reality itself. The grid knows where everything is and it keeps track of everyone and everything. And it moves energy around so that even if you go out into the middle of nowhere there are still limited reality programs and it still maintains the dense rigid structure of objects. Grid structures in unpopulated areas are nowhere near as complex so if you want to take a group of say a dozen or two dozen people to reprogram the grid to make reality less dense enough to manifest things out of thin air, which would probably be at least 75% less dense than usual. You should take them out into the middle of nowhere because the grid structures are less complex and less rigid. So the grid maintains the dense rigid structure of objects. But it's more than that. The matrix AI maintains the very shape and layout of the planet and everything on it. So in that way it acts as part of the subconscious mind. The grid itself remembers these things but it's the I, Sophia and the Demiurge, that regulate grid energy so that areas with people are dense and rigid. In a way it's like a video game. The more complex geometry there is in area the more grid energy there is to maintain the dense rigid structure of that geometry. So how does the grid work and how is it able to try to maintain such a dense limited world? It's actually quite simple. The average person doesn't generate much energy. But if you siphon energy off of millions or billions of people they generate a lot of energy. The grid system absorbs fear energy from the population and uses it to reinforce the dense rigid structure of objects. A group of a hundred people in a populated area can't generate enough energy to override the grid and make changes to the structure of objects in that area. Not even with focused intention. They may be able to make it less dense but most likely they don't know how to do that. 
And even if they did in a city it could take hundreds of people to make an area less dense because the grid structures are more rigid and there is a lot more energy running through the grid in a populated area. So the grid makes it so that it takes a serious concerted effort by a lot of people to change the shape of objects. Without making an area less dense it could take thousands of people in an unpopulated area just to bend a spoon. For that you can thank the grid. But the grid can bridge reprogram to make a small area a lot less dense so that you can manifest objects out of thin air. Basically grid energy would have to be pumped out of the area to the point where reality becomes more flexible. Once enough grid energy is gone you can use intention to make the area less dense. Just getting rid of grid energy in an area may be enough to do that. When it's more than 75% less dense than normal you can manifest objects out of thin air. And I said this is best done out in the middle nowhere preferable in an empty field with little to no trees nearby. Because the grid also maintains the structure of trees. So an empty field far from civilization will have a minimum of grid energy. So if you want to do this that is the best place. Also the grid doesn't just maintain the structure of objects. It maintains reality programs. Programs like the laws of physics. And it maintains programs that make populated areas rigid and very difficult to change. There are interconnecting grid structures that prop up these areas and maintain limited reality programs and the dense rigid state of objects in the area. It's the equivalent of if you had an astral consensus reality and you had the subconscious minds of hundreds of people propping up a small area. But unlike the subconscious mind the grid can't generate its own energy it gets it from us. But it does maintain the structure of reality itself like the subconscious mind does in consensus realities. The grid also maintains reality programs that impose limitations. It's like it tries to make reality as limited as it possibly can. It most likely also imposes other types of programs that influence people. Things like time programs that slow down time for negative experiences, yeah they use those it's sick what they're into. And it could be that it runs programs that try to prop up the illusion that it's a physical world. When seemingly physical objects are really just light shaped by force fields. So it's similar to a holodeck but way more advanced. But seemingly physical objects are holographic. Atoms don't exist that is a bullshit story they came up with. But if you looked at one under a microscope the eye would probably render one for you. But it's just an illusion. The grid is not the only thing that makes Earth so dense. There are cloaked negative energy clouds in the atmosphere that weight everything down and make it more dense. But the grid makes things very dense and rigid. When enough people, and it wouldn't take a lot, learn to manipulate the grid we can create pocket paradise less dense worlds on Earth out in the middle of nowhere. These worlds would be less dense enough to fly, teleport, shapeshift, manifest objects out of thin air. I won't lie getting adjusted to less dense worlds is not easy. As an astral traveler I spend a lot of time in them. You can manifest your worst fears. But you get over it and then they are a lot of fun. The goal is to teach people how to create them on earth. When people realize the scale that they have been lied to about how reality works they are going to be very pissed off, they will wonder why they are working a crappy 9 to 5 job, when they can manifest what they want out of thin air. When people start learning how to manipulate the grid and create a less dense world it is going to blow people's minds. Most people are living in a sewer and don't realize it. The grid absorbs fear energy from the population and pumps it into your living room. It runs through the planet. Into every home and building. Fear in the grids is used to maintain the dense rigid structure of seemingly physical objects and to lower the vibration of the planet. The elite also do their rituals on important GERD lines and that energy also goes into your living room. On top of that there are cloaked negative energy fields in the atmosphere that weigh everything down and make everything dense. Most people are unaware of their existence but I can sense them. And there is usually a ton of negative energy is people's energy field. I cleared my energy field recently and felt a lighter. So the earth is drowning in negative energy. Energy shapes reality. So what kind of effect do you think a planet full of negative energy is going to have on reality? It's not good. The presence of of so much negative energy no doubt manifests negative outcomes for a lot people. We have to start cleaning up this mess. I can clear negative energy from an area and raise the vibration. 
but the eye controls the grid system so it just moves more negative energy into the area to lower the vibration. We have to find a way to clear areas and keep them clear and on a high vibration. We need to program the subconscious mind to completely remove the grid in our homes and to automatically neutralize negative energy and raise the vibration. If there are soul contracts involved they need to be revoked immediately. The earth is a psychic sewer. We need to start cleaning up the mess at least in our own homes. We shouldn't have to put with psychic sewage in our own homes. The subconscious mind has to be reprogrammed to uphold a more positive reality. And the grid system has got to go. They use the grid to spread negative energy all over the planet. It's a psychic sewer and we need to start cleaning up the mess before it is too late. About the holes in the matrix grid, no one knows the exact reason that holes have been seen in the frequency fence that surrounds the planet. My current belief is that there is multiple factors. One, the technology used may have some bugs in it. The elite do make mistakes sometimes. It is possible the tech is not 100% perfected. Weather conditions may possibly play a role. Two, deceased humans have been trying to escape. It is very likely that their energy fields may be causing damage to small areas of the fence. Deceased humans who have strong energy fields might even be ramming their way through it. The fact that the frequency fence even exists is beyond disturbing. The satanic global elite have really cemented their insane devotion to the archons and the satanic demiurge. They put the fence in place knowing its purpose is to keep deceased souls from escaping this nightmare.